Anytime I see a piece of cheese, I always think, cheese, please. Ah, does anybody recognize where that's from? Because anytime I see a piece of cheese, I think of that. Now, I'm going to be dating myself here, but does anybody recognize where cheese, please, ah, comes from? If not, just stay put. I'll tell you the answer at the end of the video. Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another cheesy tutorial where we are going to texture our cheese that we made using booleans, we're to apologize it, and now it's time to texture it. I am going to procedurally texture this gray cheese into something that actually looks edible. If you're new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. Bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and procedurally shade this piece of cheese. All right, so you can see over here to the left, this is what it usually looks like, and this is what it looks like when it's procedure, when it's actually textured. There are several things that we're gonna be working on, including how to use AI mix shaders, cell noises, subsurface scattering, and so much more. So let's do this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this one, Control H, and just focus on this one and assign a new material. So right click, assign a new material, go to Arnold AI Standard Surface, and there it is. And basically what we're gonna start off is with the yellow part of the cheese. So I'm gonna call this yellow cheese, yellow cheese shader. And of course we wanna pick a color. I am gonna, I already kind of messed around. So I'm gonna pick kind of like a yellowish color and let's see what that looks like so far. So we are going to have two different types of colors. We're gonna have kind of like an orangey color and then we're also gonna have a yellowing color. Now we wanna mix these two colors together. So how are we gonna do that? Using the AI mix shader. So let's open up the hypershade by clicking on this little sphere, teal sphere with a white circle on it. That's the hypershade. If you've never played with the hypershade before, I have a tutorial on it. Here we have our materials, which is all of our shaders. Over here is the areas that we can build our shader. Here's a preview, which um, I'm not really gonna use. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna close all of this. And then also I'm gonna close this because I really wanna have a nice space. And also because I wanna, oops, I just closed it. <laughs> that was an accident. Um, I wanna be able to see what's going on. So I'm gonna kind of tear this off and move it around aside. I'm gonna also drag this over to here if it lets me right around here we go. And I'm also gonna close my outliner because I really don't need it. I need to focus on my shading. All right, cool. So I've got my hyper shade over here. I've got my materials over here. I have my attributes over here, but I also need my render window. So let me crank up my render window. Here it is, I'm gonna press escape so it stops rendering. And you can leave it hovering or you can actually dock it. So I'm gonna dock it over here because the reality is, is like I'm not gonna really be playing around too much with this model. I'm going to be looking at what the results are. Okay, so let's um, get started. Over here, let's create a little plus sign, which is gonna be our area where we're gonna create our, our node. We're gonna need two nodes. One, the one we just created. So let's go ahead and click this one and press this button, brings up the yellow cheese. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm also gonna press the number two because I wanna collapse this. And I'm gonna make the SG node into a one. So this is number two and this is number one. So in case you guys don't know what it is, one, two, three, four, it just basically collapses it. For the yellow shader, I am going to go ahead and increase my roughness to about a 0.3. Um, cheese is a little bit rough. It is shiny, but not too shiny. And then I'm also going to increase my subsurface. So I'm gonna crank up my subsurface to about a one. Again, this is a good place to t start. You can see how white it is. So let's go ahead and change it to that yellowy color. I'm gonna go for a little bit lighter yellow. All right, it's not looking that appetizing. Let me render it out and see how it goes. I am gonna be hitting stop and play and maybe even pausing the tutorial so you don't have to watch it render because it's, I don't know, it's not that exciting. Um, and I also don't want the tutorial to be like 20 minutes long. So, uh, all right, that's a good start. Let's press stop. I'm gonna take a snapshot, bink. And we need another AI standard surface. So over here, we're gonna hit tab and just type in AI standard. And you can see the second option is the AI standard surface and activate that. This one is going to be my orange cheese shader. And we are going to assign it. So middle mouse and drag, or you guys can right click existing material and choose the orange cheese shader. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. 
not very exciting. This one's going to be the orange part of the cheese. So let's go ahead and grab that nice orange. See what that looks like. I'm also going to increase my roughness. So I'm going to increase this one to about 0.4. So it's a little rougher. And just like we did before, we're going to crank up our subsurface and we are going to be using a little bit of that orange color. Maybe calm it down a little bit. Let me make this one. I like that one. Let me make sure my yellow cheese again. I'm going to middle mouse and drag make this sure that this one's actually more yellow. All right. I just want to make sure there's a color difference. Okay. So that's looking more yellow and this one's looking a little bit more orange. Hmm. So how are we going to mix these two shaders together? Well, we're going to use the AI mix shader. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to hit tab and type in AI mix and you're going to see the AI mix shader. And I have, again, I have video tutorials on the, on these guys, but basically I'm going to grab my, um, node here the little tail of out color and connect it to shader one. And then I can grab the out color for the orange cheese shader and grab it in sh uh, shader number two. And the next thing I need to do is assign the shader so I can middle mouse and drag it to the model, or I can always right click, go to existing material and choose the AI make shader two. And at zero, we have um, shader one. And if I go all the way to the right, we have shader two. So these are the two that are going to drive the shaders. But we need a file or a texture that's going to drive these. Uh, they're going to mix them together instead of being like at 50%. So we are going to be using, and I'm going to scoot these down, what's called an AI cell. So let's go ahead and type in AI cell noise. And we're just going to try to grab the out color, drag it into the mix, and you'll see that it can't. That's because this out color has RGB, and this can only accept black and white information. Click the little plus sign, grab the R, and drag it into the mix, and there you go, because the R is the black information for red, G is the black and white information for green, and blue is the, you know, so on and so forth. So if you grab any of these, they would work, but usually I just grab the R. So let's take a look at that as well. Let me scoot these down. You're getting kind of tight. And also I'm just going to press it to here. Doesn't look much is going on. So we're going to go ahead and stop this, hit this little guy right here. And this is called isolate select. So what that means is that if I select one of these shaders, it will render here. If I select the yellow one, we get the yellow. And if I select the orange one, we get the orange one. I feel like my orange needs to be a little bit more. Well, I can always change it later. Okay, let's focus. All right, let's go over here to our AI noise and we're gonna go to Warly one, which is gonna change our pattern, but it's a little hard to see the actual pattern. So let's go to our scale and change this to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Let me try that again. The last one, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. There you go. So now we're getting these patterns. Um, I'm actually going to go a little smaller, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go. So now we're getting this really cool looking pattern. So anything white is going to drive one shader, anything black is going to drive the other. So let's take a look what it looks like in the mix shader. And you can see that it's starting to kind of give this color um, a more unique, realistic texture. I'm going to go ahead and let it render. All right, there it is. I'm going to take a snapshot and let's compare it. Notice how flat this looked in comparison to here. This one has a lot more depth. And the reason why is because of the shader. You can kind of see the difference there. You can push it a little bit further. Uh, let's go back to our AI noise, AI cell noise. And what we're going to add is an AI range. So let's go ahead and add an AI range. And we're going to grab our out color, drag it into our input. Then we're going to grab the, whoops, the, RG, the RGB, the R, and drag it into the mix. So what that's going to give us is an option to make this a little bit more dramatic. So right now there's a lot of gray. So if we want to push it a little further, we can kind of grab the input max or min and make sure that our blacks are more black. And actually, I'm just curious what that's going to look like. And let's make a selection to render. Let's make a selection so we don't have to render the whole thing and let's compare. Now the two colors are actually very similar, so therefore we're not going to see too much of a difference. But if I went a little crazy, let's say that instead of this, I chose purple and maybe turned off my subsurface, you can see that if I go back here, you can see this, the different splatches. 
right? So the subsurface is really overpowering it, but you can see that I can make changes of the color and the shader automatically will feed into the mix shader. And you can also see how the mix shader is affecting it. So let's go back here and make sure that our whites are whiter by dragging this more this way. Whoops, too far, too far, too far. And I don't need it to be too dramatic. Am I, maybe I need to type it in. So maybe like a 0.5, let's see what that looks like. So our contrast is a lot more dramatic, right? So let me go back to my cheese here and make sure that I uh, make it look more, this is my yellow one. So let's grab that yellow and let's bring back the subsurface yellow. And I might go a little lighter on the subsurface just because I really wanna make it look cheesy. And let's go back to our mix shader. So now you can really see the difference between the two shaders a little too much, but it's there. Let me calm that down. So somewhere around 0 0.2 and 0.9. And we still get that nice contrast, but it's not as dramatic. Let's go ahead and let it render. All right, so you can see the difference between before and after, and it just looks a lot more realistic than when it was a solid color. So it's definitely looking a lot better. So, you know, cheese is smooth, but not this smooth. So let's add a little bit of bumpiness. So we are gonna go back into our original shaders. And what we're gonna do is go down to the bottom where we see geometry. Here's our bump map. We're gonna make a connection. And I'm going to type up here, NOI. And what I'm looking for is AI noise. Now you're going to get this window because very similar to AI mix, bump value can only accept black and white and noise can be colorful. So out here in the out color, we're going to click on this little plus sign. I'm going to select the R and I'm going to select the bump value. And you can see the connection here. You can also see the connection was made along here as well. So here's the yellow, oh, and I can close this. So here's the yellow cheese, here's my bump node, and here is my noise. So what we're gonna do is look at the, let's make a selection and let's take a look at the noise. Okay, here's my yellow cheese, and you can see that the bump is affecting it. Please disregard my angry old cat, who is, um, probably has a full plate of food, but once more, just in case. <laughs> and you can see how the AI noise is affecting the cheese. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop there, and take a screenshot, and then let's take a look at it, what happens when we go to the AI mix shader and how much of it stays. Oh, right, so you can see that the bump is no longer all over the place, like evenly. It's actually distributed in the areas that uh, the mix shader allows. So it looks a lot more realistic. So this is what we had before. It's now kind of scattered and it also helps with the breaking up the texture of the cheese. So if you feel like this is a little too strong, that it's too bumpy, you can always go to the bump 2D node here and reduce the bumpiness. So for example, and uh, it's starting to work really hard here, but let me go ahead and reduce this to about half and then go back to my mix shader and see what type of effect it has. All right, so I stopped the render and you can compare the difference that the bump before was, was sig more significant and this one's a little calmer and I feel like that looks a lot nicer. Now let's see if um, you guys are getting different results. Let's say you guys are following along and you're like, you know, my subsurface is really crazy in comparison to what you have, what's going on? Well, it's actually based on scale. I'm gonna take this item and I'm actually gonna scale it really, really small, like this much and then focus on it. And you're gonna notice that my subsurface scattering is significantly stronger when my object is small. So it's all based on scale. So if your piece of cheese is really large, then you're gonna need more subsurface for it to be able to be affected. But if your cheese is tiny, then you probably need to reduce your values when it comes to subsurface. So that's what it looked before. That looks what it is now. And if we wanna just kinda of compare it, let me turn on the grid and show you where is my grid. Oop, let me stop this. Oopsie. <laughs> there it is. So now I've moved the, here's the grid, right? And here's my piece of cheese. And originally I'm gonna go back to the way it was, which is this. So you can see that this piece of cheese is way bigger than the grid. So again, the subsurface really affects the way that your subsurface, the scale affects your subsurface. So if I want to have a more yellow cheese, I can actually crank this up and I can also change the scale. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's see what that looks like. Right. So now you can see that my subsurface is significantly more dramatic than what it was. So I think it's too much. Right. I do kind of like some of it, but let's reduce it to like 1.5. And I'm going to go to my other yellow cheese and change it to 1.5 as well. Oh, you see what I did there? I changed 4.5 and it made it to that. I'm like, what happened? Let's go back to 1.5. I want less subsurface. There's a bunch of other stuff you guys can play with subsurface scattering. It's actually a pretty cool node, but we're going to go ahead and leave it as this, as is. And there you go, everybody. That is how you can create a delicious looking piece of cheese using procedural shading. Now, while this renders, I want to state that procedural shading is an art on its own. I definitely encourage you guys to uh, learn how to procedural shade. The nice thing about procedural shading is that I can, uh, I can create the shader and reuse it on multiple files or, or on anything really. So for example, I'm going to grab my a cube and look how tiny it is. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to assign my mix shader. And it, it doesn't have any holes, but it's got, it looks like cheese because it's using a procedural shader and you don't have to UV map it, <laughs> which is the best part. So that's why procedural shading is really nice is because you don't really have to UV map it and things like that. Now there's limitations to procedural shading, but um, it, if you can use it, I highly recommend that you, uh, you try it. So if you are interested in pursuing more procedural shading, take a look at my YouTube channel and playlist. And I have an Arnold for Maya playlist where I go over what Arnold AI standard surface does, how you can create shaders with wireframe on top, how to add dust on top. You can do all sorts of uh, really cool things, how to do double shade, uh, double sided, the two sided nodes, how to um, use the AI jitter and so on and so forth. So it's a lot of fun to kind of get an introduction uh, to the Arnold AI standard surface and how to create things procedurally. If you want a stronger render, I encourage you guys to go to your render settings, press stop, increase your four. Uh, you can increase this to three, three. I don't really have transmission, but I do have subsurface. So make sure that goes up and you want to turn on your adaptive sampling. Again, I have video tutorials on all of the explanation on everything. And I'm going to increase this to an eight and then I'm going to let it render and I will be right back. All right, after 14 minutes, sometimes I feel like I need to upgrade my computer, but here it is, our beautiful piece of rendered cheese. Let me hit one one to make sure, there you go. And you can see the nice details, really pretty in comparison to what we had before. And you can see how much this piece of cheese has evolved from grayscale. Actually, my second go looks way better than this, but uh, here's the grayscale and now we have, whoops, this one. So hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you felt that this is worth a like and subscribe, please do. That would be am amazing. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this stuff and that you want to see more. Or you can always leave a comment. That's always helpful. Um, I can't respond to all comments, but I definitely do read them. So thank you everybody who has made a comment in the past. I appreciate it. Also take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free e resources such as ebooks, 3D models, and so much more. And there you can also find e-courses. If you want to support me further, you can purchase an e-course or two. That would be incredible. Uh, my e-courses are deep dive into Maya when it comes to modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and lighting and rendering. So again, thank you so much for spending the time. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you're looking at this piece of cheese and are ready to go get some, which I think I'm going to right after this video tutorial. All right, guys, have a great one. See you in the next one. Keep creating and I will see you in the next video tutorial. Hey, guys, did anybody figure out where this is from? At the beginning of the video, I asked if anybody remembers the statement cheese, please. Ah, if you do, you're probably around my age. But just in case you don't know what it is, this video is a little accelerated. But the answer is Quest for Glory 1 from Sierra. When I was a kid, this is the game I used to play and I fell in love with it. I thought it was so much fun and hilarious. And our, the main character sits down, talks to this wizard, and this little rat shows up and says, cheese, please. Ah, and then casts a spell and brings a piece of cheese to him. And my sisters and I played this game and we just fell in love with this scene. And that's what every time I see 
a piece of cheese. I always think cheese, please. Uh, so I just thought I want, I just wanted to share that silly story with you guys. All right. I'll see you next time.